That's our last game of the year, so it's a big game. We put ourselves in a spot with, you know, there's, I think, six teams that are within a game here at 9-8 and eight or 8-9 eight and nine going into the uh, last game. So there's a lot of, a lot of seeding yet to be determined for the SEC tournament. So it's a big game. LSU's uh, one of the best defensive teams in the country. I believe they were number one in the country the last time we played them. I think they're, they're still top five. So, you know, they made the, probably the biggest improvement in the country, I would guess, from last year to this year on defensive end. They're playing hard. Eason's going to be up for conference player of the year. They've got really good players. Eason comes off the bench. He's that good for them. So they're, they're talented. They play hard. They get to the offensive boards. They turn you over on defense. So two major issues we've had problems with are the turnovers and the uh, giving up old boards. They're, they're exceptional at. So we're going to have to play well. We've got to take care of the ball. we got to figure out how to rebound with them. And then, you know, obviously we're going to have to make some shots. Last year down there we made shots at a pretty high clip. But it's a completely different team than this year. So it'll be a tough test for us. We're, we're looking forward to it, though. It'll you know, after Saturday, we'll know where our seating's at, and then we'll get ourselves ready for SEC tournament play. All right. Thank you, Coach. We'll go ahead and start with questions. Let's start first with Nick Kelly. Yeah, Rojas uh, mentioned that he felt like it's been a good couple days of practice since uh, the a &M game. I mean, what do you feel like the response has been like since that loss? Yeah, I mean, I think the guys realized it wasn't good. Now, why we continue to have to – Learn the same lesson over and over again this year. It's a little mind boggling to me, but he, I mean, he's right. Typically, I mean, Georgia's one in 16 in the league. They're one wins against us after the Georgia loss. We came back, practice well, and beat Baylor. You know, so we've responded well every time we've had these losses. I just, we're at the point of the season you can't afford those losses anymore. But when we were at that point Wednesday when we had the loss, so. You know, they, they're, they're bouncing back. You know, guys are practicing hard. They're playing hard. I, I think we'll get a good effort down in Baton Rouge. You know, we could play really hard, great basketball, and still lose to LSU because they're that good of a team. But, uh, yeah, Rose, correct. I mean, we've had two really good practices, and guys have responded well like they have most of the season. We just we, – we, we can't afford any more of those games the rest of the year. Joey Blackwell. Hey, Coach, this question is similar to Nick's, but, you know, after the game on Wednesday, you talked about the leadership on the team. Um, and I was just wondering what you've seen from the team's leaders kind of also uh, in response uh, to the loss. I mean, the guys that we need to lead have been playing hard in practice and trying to lead. I, I think, you know, it's – there was there's a leadership – void after a loss like that obviously so sometimes guys step into that void well we're gonna see how the leadership goes you know everybody knew we needed to play hard yesterday and practice today and practice we need to be locked in for shoot around tomorrow the game tomorrow like how long will it continue you know is to me the bigger question because if we're gonna make a run in march i mean we, we've got to the SEC tournament play starts next Thursday. We're less than a week away from that for us. It will. It starts next Wednesday for the tournament, but it's less than a week away. And then you got to have some leadership to make sure guys are ready to play every single game, no matter who it is in the tournament we're playing. And then March Madness, you know, depending on what our seed is and who's at the other seeds, you know, I, I don't know if these guys will take, I would hope, and we're going to do our best as coaches to make sure that no matter who we get matched with in the NCAA tournament, it's taken as seriously as Gonzaga, Baylor, Houston, Tennessee, you know, these other teams that we've taken very seriously. But the, the, the best way that that happens is the internal leadership of the team makes sure that happens. And that, that's where we need to get this thing to. Charlie Potter. Hey, Coach, it's been a minute since you guys played LSU and you talked about how good they are defensively. Have you seen them maybe improve or, or change just in watching films since the last time you guys played? Well, the biggest thing since the last time we played them is Pinson's playing. He didn't against us. And then um, Days got hurt and didn't play the whole game against us. They're both back and playing well. So they'll have their full roster. 
I mean, the other thing they've been doing, they've been a little bit more aggressive with their defense. I mean, they've always been switching everything, and they're trying to turn teams over and full court pressing and trapping. And based on how we've been handling pressure and our turnovers, I'd venture to say we'd probably see some of that uh, tomorrow. So offensively, you know, they'll have different personnel with Pinson out there than they did the first time we played. But Easton's still, if you go to Ken Palm, I think he's second on conference player of the year listing behind Shibway. He, he's really good. He's climbing up the boards on these draft boards. He's playing really well because he plays so hard. You know, he has fouled out of the last three games, so he's a little bit foul prone, which would be great. I mean, a player of his caliber, if you can get him in foul trouble and, you know, they have to play without him for large periods of the game, you know, that would obviously be beneficial to us. Michael Cascarande. Yeah, too, if I could, uh, who have you seen specifically step up into that leadership void in the last day? Well, I think Rojas has been trying. I think he's continuing to try, and he's he's definitely comfortable being vocal. You know, Shackelford's tried uh, various points of the year, and I think, you know, we talk to him, sometimes he gets frustrated. Like, we can't be frustrated as leaders. You can, but you still have to lead. You still have to talk make your voice heard, you know, continue to do it. I think those those guys have been good. Um, you know, we've got some other guys that needed to play harder that have been playing hard in practice and giving us what they have and trying to be locked in. But, you know, I think Rojas is the most comfortable vocal leader we have that's trying to step up um, and checks, you know, been a little better, We, you know, JQ's been uh, – JQ is better today. I think, uh, you know, there's been times through the year that he's been a lot more vocal and we're better when your point guard's being a vocal leader and being that way. So we need him to continue to uh, be, be a little bit more vocal and give us the effort that, you know, he's capable of giving. You go back and look at how hard he played against Baylor. I mean – he dominated the matchup with a Ken Joe, and that was a big reason we won that game. So if he could play that hard and be a lot more vocal like he was after the Georgia game, you know, that that's where I think we're our best team. And in terms of the, the scenarios for the SEC tournament, how do you understand it? But how are you approaching that with, um, you know? Yeah, I looked at it for about a minute, realized it was really convoluted, and there's so many variables that I wasn't going to waste any more time on it. I figured the more time I spent looking at that, the less time I spent looking at LSU. The only thing we really have in our control right now is beating LSU. So I, I figured my time would be much better spent figuring out how to try to beat LSU than rather than trying to figure out every possible. That's Aaron's job. I'm sure he's got all those scenarios figured out. He'll tell me uh, right after our game with LSU where everything's at so we know our options based on whether we win or lose uh, versus LSU. Talking a little trash on the field? Yeah, we get it. Trashing the state with litter? That's terrible. Keep it clean. Keep Alabama 